All right, then I'm going to show you how to remap a Honda Civic FD 1.8. It's actually the same process as that 2 liter. It's actually the same process for pretty much any Honda, whether it's a Civic, CRV, Jazz, Brio, Accord, it's pretty much all the same. And as you can see here, our dyno looks a little bit naked here right now without the fancy red cover because we're doing some maintenance on it. And apparently, the thing needs cleaning every so often for the optical sensor to read the RPM. So. Anyway, step one, what we're going to be doing, that's why here we're going to do a baseline dyno, see how much power it makes for a Civic. Then we're going to read the ECU, then of course edit, remap it. I'll show you what are the parameters that we pretty much adjust when it comes to remapping Hondas. And then afterwards, we're going to write the tune back and see how much more power we get. Okay, as you saw a while ago, we were reading the ECU. This is the software that we're using. This is PCM Flash. This is a reader writer. So there's two pieces of software that are used primarily when you remap. One is, I mentioned, reader writer, and it does what it says. It reads and it writes. That's it. <laughs> nothing more, nothing less. Now, the second part of that one is the editor, which is this one. Uh, think of it this way. Uh, a reader writer is basically an electronic form of a person physically reading and writing the file. Think of it as WinZip. So you can extract the file, you can zip the file. So that's the easier way. Then the editor is something like a Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel. So you have a document file that can only be opened with Microsoft Word or an Excel file that can only be opened with Microsoft Excel. If you try to open it in any other program, the program will say the file not supported. So you cannot open an Excel file in Photoshop and vice versa and all of that. So that's the easiest analogy I can think of. So this is our editor program and when I say it looks like Excel, I'm not kidding. It does look like Excel here. There, see, it's a bunch of rows and a bunch of columns. So this, what I open here right now is the throttle control map. So this determines the delay. Well, it's not determined. It is delayed. It is delayed. <laughs> this is a bigger map, so it really is delayed. Uh, the explanation is this one. This is percentage of your pedal effort. So this is literally how many percent you step on the pedal. This is RPM. So obviously, the more you step on the pedal, the higher the RPM goes. The numbers here in the middle, this means how much is the actual opening of the throttle valve itself. It's also in percentage. So as you can see here, why there is a delay. At 5% pedal, it only opens 2.2, 2.3, 2.1, 9 It's not even even. And at 10% pedal, it only opens 5%, 4%. At 15%, it only opens 7, 8, 9. It's not even the full 15. 20, uh, 13, it only pretty much starts to even out at here the 35% mark. So at 35% throttle, you are usually should be at around 2,500 RPM already. So now it's open 25%. And then as you go down, obviously 100% pedal equals to 100% opening. <laughs> So what we do with this one is, we change this one to make it a bit more linear. So there's a bit more aggressive throttle, we can get rid of the delay which everybody hates. Uh, the way I do this is to make sure that for any given combination of this one, if it is a 20% throttle pedal application and what at whatever RPM it is, it opens 21%. So I'm making the throttle and your pedal one is to one. Also, make this entire thing 30. There. This thing is over to be 35. Okay. Now, that's it. This one pretty much adjusts the throttle to get rid of the delay. So, this is just one of the maps that are available. The other maps that are editable are all here. We can even adjust idle if you want. Sometimes, uh, for some unknown reason, the idle is a bit low. Ooh, the, this is the explanation here. So, negative. So this is temperature, so negative 25, negative 15, 0, 3, 4, and all of that. Uh, obviously, we don't have negative 25, we don't have negative 15 because we don't have winter here. So we pretty much start here at 0, and then as it warms up, this is why a lot of people, this is what most people <laughs> seem to forget. When the first time that you start up your engine, the RPM is really high because it has to warm up. And this is where we can see that. So at 0 degrees, it's 1,300 RPM. 
So same thing at 30 degrees, which is basically ambient temperature. 1,300 then as it warms up it gradually goes down we can adjust we can adjust this say you want it higher warm-up I can make this 1,500 and for some unknown reason if your throttles uh, if your menor is a bit low which I'll, sometimes people do complain about your menor even though it's a completely stock car uh, I can make this 900 or this one 850 so I can adjust idle speed here. This is the rev limit at park and in neutral. So when you step on the pedal in park, it does not want to go over 4,700. So this one I will change. Oops. Six, five. There you go. Then that's six, seven, that's fine. And we have here something called speed limit. Uh, the default is 200 kilometers per hour. Uh, I can make this 300. Not that you will reach it, but <laughs> For all test purposes, there's practically no limit, and then this one will change it to 6,000, so you can rev all the way to 6,000 even in fifth gear. Then the rest of this stuff we will change. Uh, this is for this determines spark plug timing. So the old school people know this as advance and retard. So that's when you pick P hit the distributor clockwise or counterclockwise. This is the equivalent of that one. Then we have here target lambda this is for air fuel ratio uh, this is engine speed this is basically pedal barometric pressure actually so the more you step on the pedal the more the pressure goes into the engine then this is what the actual air fuel ratio is in lambda uh, one meaning stoichiometric 14.7 is to one and the lower numbers mean rich higher numbers mean lean 99% uh, of the time you do not go above 0.95 or 1 on these things. Don't do that. That's the area where it's super lean and then engine knock occurs. So most of the time with Hondas, we actually add fuel to get more power. And how we know to do that and how much to adjust, well, that's what the dyno is for. So if you want to make it rich here, so we, yeah, it clicks like that. So this part will still remain stock. If we want it to say idle, this part here, you want it to be a little bit more tipid. We can arrange, we can do this, we can make this a little bit leaner so it burns a little bit, bit less fuel. Then as you want more power, this area, we add a little bit more fuel. So this is how we adjust uh, the parameters. And then after all of this one, we export the whole thing. Then we save it as a file, and then this same file we will write again using PCM Flash, then Dino afterwards. One of the cool things we do when we remap the Civic is we get rid of the annoying 4,000 RPM rev cut when you're in park or in neutral. Uh, that's been a common stickler point ever since the FD came out. You cannot show off to your friends their nice sounding exhaust. So right now, we got rid of that. You can now rev all the way to red line. There you go, it all revs all the way to 6,500 now. <laughs> We're done with our Civic and this is what the dyno chart looks like and this is what it means. This red line here is our baseline run meaning whatever the car's condition that's the horsepower so it's 99.996 so 100 horses for all, all intents and purposes and this is pretty much what we expect from a 1.8 Civic. Uh, they're normally at 100 to 110 horses and this thing still has a catalytic converter installed. He has an open air intake but pretty much that's it. And these two lines are our tune, so let's, for all the purposes, they're just one line. Uh, the light blue line and the purple line, this is after tuning. So our peak horsepower is 109, 110 for all these purposes. So it's 10 horses here at peak at 6'8", but that's not the only thing that you should look at. Uh, most people always tend to focus on the maximum horsepower, which only happens here at 6,800 RPM, nowhere else. What's most important is actually 
here at the low RPM level, starting here at 1.8, which is basically just a little above idle, we went from 22 horses to 42 horses. So we practically doubled the horsepower here at from the get-go. And our torque also went from 85 to 157, so double also. And the maximum torque now happens here at 1.8 RPM instead of before here is at 5,000 RPM. And people complain about the lag, the delay and all of that. This is what it looks like here, that one there. See, it starts really low, 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 then goes up. Same thing with here, starts low, then goes up. Uh, so if we were to average the whole power gain, which is this area here, this pizza pie slice here, like that, this is around 15 to 18 horses on average, the entire thing. Our torque also, numerically, it's to get this whole thing right here. And that averages out to around uh, 30, 35 Newton meters more over stock. And aside from it revving a while ago to 6,500, we also got rid of the throttle delay. And drive normally, you should see about 8 to 10% better mileage because you don't have to step on the pedal very much no more to get the power and the torque you want. As you can see here right now, your maximum torque is a lot earlier than it was on stock. 